Pushpa is the story of a poor laborer, who makes serious enemies as he climbs the ranks in the world of red sandalwood smuggling. Hi guys! Welcome to Kaylee King. Today we'll recap the events of 2021 action drama movie, titled Pushpa. Let's get right into it. The scene opens by introducing us to a Japanese tradition, where expensive gifts are exchanged in marriages. One of the most popular gifts is a musical instrument called shamisen, which is super expensive because of the wood required to make it. It is made from a specific type of wood called red sandalwood, which only grows in one place in the entire world, the jungles of Andhra Pradesh in India. And since cutting trees is strictly prohibited in the area, red sandalwood is illegally smuggled from the jungles all the way to Japan. Now, the story begins with a truck carrying red sandalwood while police chase after it. Police soon surround the truck and our protagonist, Pushpa, comes out of it in style. He beats all the police officers one by one, and offers 100,000 rupees as a bribe. The inspector rejects his offer and arrests Pushpa at gunpoint. While heading to the station, Pushpa reveals that he wasn't offering 100,000 in entirety, but to each officer. This causes the inspector to stop the car, and gladly accept his deal. They take the bribe and let Pushpa leave with the truck. Now the scene cuts to one year ago where we learn how it all started. Pushpa used to work in a factory, but he was kicked out of the job because of his unparalleled attitude. A colleague, named Kesava, witnesses Pushpa's thirst for respect and success, and begins following him in hopes of making it big one day. The following morning, Pushpa wakes up at his home where a guy is embarrassing his mother in front of everyone for not repaying the loan. So Pushpa sells his cow and repays the loan, but when the man begins to leave, Pushpa stops him, and tells him to announce to everyone that he has repaid all the money. This is because her mother suffered embarrassment in front of everyone, so he must take his insult back when everyone is present. This gives us an idea of how much important respect is for Pushpa. Later, Pushpa goes to find work, and this time, he chooses to do high-paying illegal work instead of low-paying legal work. The work involves cutting down red sandalwood trees, so they can be smuggled. Everybody starts cutting, but soon after, a guy signals to them that the police are coming and all the workers start running. Pushpa stops all of them and tells them they will stand their ground. When the police arrive, they don't find any red sandalwood, and DSP Govind puts the gun at Pushpa's head. Pushpa calls all the workers with axes, so the police have no choice but to retreat as they are outnumbered big time. Then we see that Pushpa hit all the wood high in the trees by making a pulley. The following day, they are piling up the red sandalwood when Govan arrives again, but this time he has brought a larger force to outnumber the laborers. Pushpa starts the truck, but the police keep following him. Despite this, Pushpa manages to hide the truck and comes out empty-handed. Govan then takes Pushpa into custody, and starts torturing him to reveal the location of the truck loaded with red sandalwood. Yet, Pushpa remains silent and the police are unable to retrieve any information from him. Then we are introduced to three new characters, Jolly Reddy, a carefree person who exploits women and enjoys all the bad things in life, Jaka Reddy, who is the most educated among the three, and Kanda Reddy, the senior of the three. Pushpa and the other laborers are actually working for these three brothers. Now, the Reddy brothers are so impressed by Pushpa's attitude that Jaka Reddy meets Pushpa and appreciates his resilience in keeping his lips sealed. Jaka Reddy asks where he has hidden the truck exactly, to which Pushpa responds saying he wants 500,000 rupees for the information. Despite Jolly's disapproval, Jaka agrees, and Pushpa takes them to the pond where he dumped the truck in hurry. They get the truck out, and Pushpa gets his 500,000 rupees. There, Jolly tells Pushpa to now leave by taxi, which infuriates him. He had come to the location in their car, so now he will only leave in a car too. Pushpa tells his friend Kesava to get him a new van like Jolly Reddy's, with the money they just got. Kesava follows his order and buys him a red color van. Later, we learn that Kanda Reddy is now really worried about his business because the police have installed multiple check posts in the area and it has become harder and harder to smuggle sandalwood. Pushpa shares a plan about how they can transport sandalwood and Kanda Reddy likes the plan. He makes him in charge of the wood smuggling and Pushpa begins hiding wood in a milk tank they specially designed to smuggle wood. The lower half of the truck is filled with sandalwood, whereas the upper half is with milk. Kanda Reddy offers Pushpa 500,000 rupees for transporting sandalwood worth 10 million rupees, but Pushpa tells him that he will only charge 4%. Kesava asks why is he taking 4% even when Kanda is offering more, Pushpa says he does not want to get paid as a worker but he wants to split the profit and become a partner in the business. After some time, Pushpa was smuggling sandalwood when he comes across a girl named Srivali, and immediately falls in love with her. She is the daughter of Pushpa's co-worker and she works as a milk supplier. Pushpa gets to see her every day when he delivers milk, but Srivali is not remotely attracted to him. Everything is going smoothly until one day, the police stop the milk truck for investigation and the cop strikes the upper and lower part of the truck. 
Both parts sound different and the cop realizes that they are carrying sandalwood inside. They arrest the driver, who happens to be Srivali's father, and Govind offers him 5 million rupees for being their spy. One day, Srivali is planning to watch a movie with her friends but they are short on money, so Kesava offers them 1000 rupees and says that in return, Srivali will have to take glances at Pushpa and smile at him. When she gives him a look and smiles, Pushpa gets shocked and asks whether she likes him or not. Srivali reveals how she is only doing this for money, which embarrasses Pushpa. He thinks of beating up Kesava but on the other side, he comes up with an idea and tells him to go again and tell the girl that he would offer her 5000 rupees for a kiss. Srivali comes there with her friends but she refuses to kiss him as she tells him that she will only give her first kiss to her husband. Meanwhile, we learn that the whole Kanda gang works for Mangalam Srinu, because he's the boss of the syndicate. He's the only man who navigates the sandalwood through 15 checkpoints to the Chennai port. Srinu comes to meet Kanda and asks him for a safe place where they can store the sandalwood because there is still some time left before the wood gets transported. Since Jolly Reddy isn't responsible enough to do any kind of work properly, Kanda suggests Pushpa's name and gives him the duty to protect Srinu's goods. The following morning, Pushpa goes to the warehouse and finds all the wood in the open. He asks the workers why is all the sandalwood outside and they say that Jolly was busy partying all night and stopped all the work. Just then, Pushpa gets a call from Kanda that police are coming to their warehouse for a raid, so Pushpa makes a plan and starts throwing all of the sandalwood into the river. He then sends his friend Kesava to close the dam. When the police arrive there, they don't find any trace of red sandalwood and they are forced to leave. Now Kesava bribes the dam controller and closes the dam gate, so all the sandalwood accumulates there. In celebration, Srinu throws a big party where all the gang members of the syndicate arrive. Here, Pushpa learns from somebody that Srinu earns 20 million rupees by selling one ton of sandalwood in Chennai, but he gives only 250,000 to the ready gang. Pushpa goes up to Kanda and tells him everything about this. He tells Pushpa to go up to him and ask him to raise the price from 250,000 to 500,000. When Pushpa reaches Srinu's home, he sees that Srinu's brother-in-law is slitting someone's throat because he had also come there to raise the sandalwood price. Pushpa is unfazed by this as he directly calls Morgan, the dealer in Chennai. Srinu and his men revolt, but Pushpa beats everybody in the room and takes an exit like a boss. The next day, Pushpa and Kesava go to Chennai to meet Morgan, but he is not allowed to meet him. However, as soon as he gives the sample of his sandalwood to Morgan, he himself comes out to meet Pushpa because the quality of the product is unparalleled. Morgan wants to sign the deal directly with him, and the scene ends there. On the other hand, we see Srivali's father being tortured by Jolly because now they've come to know that he was spying on them for the police, and has leaked their secrets. Jolly also misbehaves with Srivali and asks her to spend a night with him if she wants to set her father free. She goes to Pushpa for help and reveals that she loves him very dearly. After this, Pushpa beats Jolly brutally and he is hospitalized. When Kanda sees his brother in this situation, he takes Pushpa to a secluded place and covers Pushpa's face with a cloth. Kanda is about to shoot Pushpa but Srinu's gang attacks them and kills Kanda. Pushpa somehow frees himself and then kills everyone in Srinu's gang. Srinu's brother-in-law is about to kill Jaka Reddy, but Pushpa saves him and kills Srinu's brother-in-law. After this incident, the MP, who is indirectly involved in this sandalwood smuggling camp decides that Pushpa will manage the syndicate from now on and everyone should sell their stock to him only. Six months pass by and Pushpa grows the business exponentially. The MP is also very happy with him. Everything's going fine until Pushpa meets the new superintendent of police, Banwar Singh. Pushpa is about to get married, so he comes to the police station and gives an invitation card to Banwar. However, Banwar denies him any respect and crushes Pushpa's ego completely. Banwar takes the bribe of 1 million and then kicks Pushpa out. But surprisingly, Pushpa begins befriending him, and follows all his orders. On his marriage day, Pushpa shows his true colors and takes revenge for the disrespect he felt. He makes Banwar strip himself and then sends him to his station, where even the security dog doesn't recognize him. Pushpa then returns home shirtless and gets married to Srivali. This is because Banwar is only respected because of his uniform, whereas Pushpa's presence is more than enough to make people respect him. That was it for the recap guys. Let us know in the comments if you'd like to see part 2 of Pushpa. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you guys in the next video.